You can get your SH Monster Arts at Big Bad Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below. Hello there, collectors. It is Steven here with a review of the SH Monster Arts Shin Godzilla 2nd and 3rd form set and 4th form G Store limited color versions. Now, I gotta say this because they were offered just like their original release. The second and third form together, and the fourth form by itself. They had a very convoluted method of originally obtaining them, but now they're available on the market through a whole bunch of different methods. Now, the reason for the coloration of this set is back when Shin Godzilla was on its promotional campaign, they had a giant, goldish, bone-colored maquette available for everyone to look at. And now, Bandai has recreated this maquette coloration in action figure format. Now, regardless of what method you use to get these figures, they are intimidating in prospects for how you can actually get them. So, you know what I'm gonna say. Let's take a look to see whether or not they're worth adding into your collection. We'll run through this review like my normal reviews, each section featuring all three goobers and then moving on to the next. So we have Bonnie here to kick off the review and I gotta say this is gonna be a constant. He looks great, simply great. He's cast in a tan beige plastic with a thick black wash and that really brings out the details well. However, Bandai being Bandai, he does have quality control issues, as all three figures do, but as you'll see them, they might be hard to notice for some. I have to say one of the impressive things here on the figure would be the eyes. He looks deathly creepy, and not all cute and cuddly like the memes might suggest. Other than that, what we have here is a repaint that helps to draw out the finer details, including the holes on the legs, which let you truly appreciate the details in the sculpt you may have missed the first time around. Wait until you see the comparison to the original in a little bit. Overall, I do have to say it looks nice, though unfortunately that bleeding through of the orange and some quality control issue, which I haven't really noted just yet, are very unfortunate. Next up in the set, we have Clyde, and this is arguably the weakest one, at least mine is, of the three. He does look nice, don't get me wrong, but here we have the most problems of them all. And looks-wise, he kind of sticks out the most and almost doesn't blend in perfectly. Why? Well, let's look a little closer. You see, the details pop out really well, but one issue is that he has a bit of an orange base. Why? Odd choice. Not truly present on the other figures as much, especially on the fourth form. It isn't there at all. Furthermore... He has paint scrapes on some areas where you can see the original unpainted plastic underneath at spots where there are joint connections and some where there aren't any joints at all. Not good. However, the paint scheme does hide these issues well. And just wait for the next form. Anyway, the third form. This one still looks good with striking details, popping veins, and the base for the second face on the tail. Yeah, it's there. It's clearly there. Stop commenting trying to say otherwise. It's literally right there on the third form. Enough of that. It's in the art book as well. So in sum, the third form, it does look nice. However, he's kind of orange. And I gotta say, I'm not really all that big of a fan of this one. Now the fourth form, and you know the saying I told you so. Well, let's pretend that I'm creative enough to put a scrolling effect on the screen of every single comment of someone saying that they didn't like how I pointed out the eyes or that the paint hid the sculpt on my review for the first release. Why? This is the definitive paint scheme for the SH Monster Art Shin. It's wonderful. It's nearly perfect. There are issues like the paint scraping, but again, they're hidden somewhat well because of the concept of the figure. But enough about that. Let's look closer. The paint application, namely just a black wash, is able to bring out the finer details magnificently well to the point all of the sculpt details are brought up and we really get to see what this figure looks like. But first, the eyes. Are you ready? Perfect. This is what I and others are talking about when it comes to them being centered correctly and looking chaotic, not completely random like some people are settling with. They should be pointed down more, yes, but this is correct in that they are looking out to the side, not like the original Shin, a comparison you'll see later. 
Anyway, on closer inspection of the figure, we can truly see the detailing on the chest, showing the grooves and so forth, which were nearly impossible to truly appreciate on the original release. The horrifying details on the legs, the feet, the dorsal plates, everywhere in between, are as clear as day on this bone-colored plastic with a dirty black wash. Only issue with the wash, which is shown clearly under the feet, is that it pulls up in some areas and it can be a bit too much. This results in a somewhat tacky feeling, but not overly detracting. Think of it like some translucent figures, or like a marmot figure if you are a Godzilla collector and you collect vinyls. Here are some clear shots of the dorsal plates, which are awesome. Again, I'm a broken record here. The sculpt is fantastic, and it's great to see the details brought out here. To wrap up the shots, the fourth form, the tail, which leads all the way up to the tip with the second face. Gruesome all the way there. Undoubtedly my favorite of the three Monster Arch Shin figures. Now remember that scraping in spots where there are joints? Look at this spot on the tail. Again, it's hidden so well because of the paint scheme and the theme of the figures, but it's still there. So the second form's articulation, I've already been over this in the actual review of the original set, but we do have the mouth which opens and closes on a ball joint. It's a little tighter here, but it is what it is. Then we have the head which attaches in on a ball joint, and then, because it popped off, we do have this really, really weird joint system of a ball plugging in, and then we have, yeah. So that's all weird, and we have one useless joint in the neck. So let's fix that up there, and then let's reattach the head. So you can move the neck around at the base there just a little bit. The little arms do move around on ball joints. This one kind of moves. This one doesn't at all. It's stuck. I'm assuming that paint is stuck in the joints, and it's preventing that, so I'm not going to touch that. We do have an ab crunch, or is that a waist joint? I don't know. But anyway, we have ball jointed hips. And as you can kind of see in there, white. Yeah, paint got stuck. Mm, not good. Joints at the knees. I'm assuming those are just ball joints. Then we have ball joints at the shin or calf area. And then we have little ball joints on the ankles, as you can see there. They're kind of moving around a little bit. Not too, too much. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ball joints for the tail, which is rather expressive, which is always nice to see in a Godzilla action figure, even if it's something like this. So yeah, you can get this one into some uh, poses other than neutral. So uh, yeah, good. Now for the third form and articulation is once again identical to the original figure. However, mine has a few teeny tiny hiccups. So what do we have? This portion for the mouth articulation, the jaw is on a hinge, opens and closes, opens and closes. Now the top part is supposed to be on a ball joint and it does work, right? It is on a ball joint, but yeah, on the original, mine could really open up and twist and turn from side to side, but apparently, yeah, it's not working too well here. So, it is what it is. Then we have this section, which is on a ball joint, and then this section, which is <laughs> clearly <laughs> on a ball joint. Wonderful there. Very loose. The arms at the shoulders, they're on ball joints, so you can twist and you can turn them around. This one is kind of stuck a little bit. You probably won't be able to hear it on the mic, but it's creaking a little bit. This section of the... Oh, that's wonderful. This section of... This section of the torso. Uh, ab crunch. We have a ball joint. So move from side to side. Then we have the waist joint, which is on a ball joint. Little tight. Um, I'm putting a little bit more effort in here than I normally would like to, especially compared to my normal ones, but it is what it is. But here's something interesting compared to my original. This feels more like rubber than it does a hard plastic, and you can actually see me moving it around. I tried this on my normal third form, didn't get that, so it is what it is there. You can see paint scraping here because this is on a ball joint, and moving it around, moving into different parts, and in the package up there as well. Yeah, so that's cool. Hips are on ball joints. We do have ball jointed knees, so can move around like that. And we have ball jointed ankles. Finish this up with an amazingly scraped ball jointed tail. Tip likes to pop off. Pain to get back on. 
So we'll just leave it there for right now. But yeah, so third form, the articulation is identical to the original, but does seem like there were some material changes and either it's paint or whatever, some of the joints do respond differently to movement. Now the fourth form, big boy shin, and let's play a game to see how well I can keep this guy in focus, okay? Okay, so articulation, guess what? Identical. Ball joint up here, can move this portion of the head up and down, a little stiff, but that's okay. We have the jaw, which is on a ball joint. So you can open really wide again, similar to the Awakening version. It doesn't seem like I can open it as wide as the original. Very weird. Because of the material choice, the teeth are actually pretty sharp, so do be careful there. But very nice pointy teeth, very nice. So we do have a ball joint here. So we have one ball joint, so you can move Shin's neck there. We have another ball joint at the base, so you can really get Shin to twist and turn like that, so that is really cool, very creepy. We have ball jointed shoulders, so this way you can move Shin's arms around like so. We do have a ball joint for the bicep area, so you can twist and turn there. Ball jointed elbows, surprisingly, so this way you can get a little bit more range of movement there. And we have ball jointed wrists, so you can spin the hands around. Isn't that cute? Yeah, it is. A little stiff on some of these joints doesn't feel 100% completely safe, so be careful there moving those around. Sorta kinda feels like maybe you're twisting plastic, which you don't really wanna do. So do be careful there. Now, we do have the ab crunch and the waist joint, both on ball joints, so you can bend shin around from side to side. Now, the ab crunch area here, which that's about as far down as shin can reach. Let's add in the neck joints, and oh yeah, shin's having a good time. Now. This joint here, that popped off, the ball joint popped off, that was a nightmare to get back on. Yeah, that was a cause for a delay in the review. That took me about an hour to pop it back into place, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like fiddling with this for the rest of the night. So yeah, that was, uh, that was not fun. We have ball jointed hips, so you can spin the legs around like so. Ball jointed knees with a couple of hinges thrown in there, as always, that's awesome. Floating knee piece. Ball jointed ankles, which, surprise, surprise, did I fix it? Yeah, so that foot loved to pop off on me. So that was never a fun time there. When I pick them up off the shelf, that would just fall. And it's like, yeah, great joint stability. And then we have ball jointed tail, which, once again, we do have that increased strength from the Awakening version, though there is one weak spot somewhere near the tip, which once again, you can see some of the areas where there are connections. Yeah, right there. Uh, the paint is starting to fade away, which is not good, but it's one of those things again, maybe you would have noticed it, maybe not, maybe you only noticed it if I pointed it out, but uh, yeah. So that is the articulation for these three dudes. And I gotta say overall, some of the slight changes are appreciated. I don't know if it's just material, Maybe it's just quality control being variable from figure to figure, but hey, thumbs up. No accessories for these three, but in a way, the second and third form set is kind of like an effect pack for the fourth form since we never actually saw a maquette in this way for them. But that's a bit of a stretch since they're figures in their own right. So yeah, someone's gonna misinterpret that in the comments, whatever. Size comparison time, no size change from the original releases, so that's always a bonus. You know exactly what you're getting and how much space you need to clear off on the shelf. Now to wrap up this review, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the figures with their original releases set to spooky Shin-themed stock music, because I don't know what else to say to cover a comparison for these three figures without completely repeating myself and running out of breath. Let's roll it!
So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. These figures absolutely trump the originals in terms of appreciating the sculpted details, but the perceived difficulty in attaining them and the weird concept, uh, yeah, that will make many shy away from getting them, resulting in only a few actually owning them. Regardless, some aggravating but in a strange way kind of acceptable quality control issues which are present, and they should not be, but eh, you know what? They might be okay for some people. Not worth the price they're going for, for sure, but that's the way that some of these figures are handled. I like them, I do, but they're not everyone's cup of tea. If you like them, you're curious if they'll be good, take it from someone who absolutely hated the first Monster Art Shin Godzilla. These three are awesome, and though I was skeptical myself at first, though I have issues with these three, I absolutely do not regret the purchase. I just wish they were cheaper and had some accessories. Like, seriously, do you know how cool it would be to see, like, a bone-themed beam coming out of this Godzilla? Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected SDR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description too to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch ya in the next video.